Laura Ford is an author who writes novels, short stories and poems across a wide range of human and animal experience. And she's here with us today. How are you? I'm great. It's good to talk to you. Well, it's great to talk to you as well. Now, you've got a new book out called Sounds Like Love. So can you just tell us what the basic idea of that book is first of all so the basic idea of my book is it's about empathy Mm. so it sounds like love is an uplifting story about um, generational guides and the different forms they can take and strength in the face of adversity yeah and how long did it take you to write it well i wrote the story as a screenplay to begin with and it did well in an international screenplay play competition Mm. and after this I was just very hooked on the story and I felt I needed to write it as a book um, to really get the detail into it and to really get the feel for the scenes and the characters. And so it took me about a year to write the book um, and and make sure that everything was the way that I wanted it. Yeah. And how easy or hard is it to convert a screenplay to a book? Because I guess the structure is different and so much more. Because as you mentioned, you have to put a lot of detail in it to make it more like a book. You do. Um, I found it easy just because I found writing it as a novel had much more of a flow and I could almost see it like a movie every scene the things that people were doing what they were saying how they were feeling and so it felt much more um flowing to me than uh, with a screenplay you kind of really have to be aware of the setting and um the direction in a way um so that you're conveying everything clearly so that someone can interpret it Mm. whereas this is more of a full experience writing it as a as a novel that's what i found for me but obviously it's different for everybody yeah and and writing it as a screenplay first, did that in a way help you to do the book because a screenplay is meant to be performed and made into a film, so it has to be kind of perfect and it has to describe exactly what the people are going to see, so in a way you have a lot of detail already that if you were to write it as a book first of all, you might forget. Um, I found it to be kind of the opposite mm. in that I had a screenplay and it kind of like you say there's a map there but when it came to writing the book I ended up adding a lot more detail and I added extra scenes and I and I kind of fleshed it out a lot more Mm. um because I had to make sure that everything could be understood by the reader and and there's no director to interpret (laughs) so um I really enjoyed the process because I became I felt like I became that much more involved in the world of my my characters and what they were going through yeah Yeah, and I guess you have a lot more ownership of your work if it's in a book because a screenplay, you're really just one person in this long crew list on a film, aren't you? Exactly. That's it. (laughs) You write it and that's it. Um, Whereas with a book, yes, it's much more involved. Um, My mother did the illustrations for the book, which was really great because she'd been through a difficult time with a car accident. She was having problems with concentration. And so I was able to involve her in my in project and say would you like to to illustrate it you know and she found that to be very uplifting and that's something obviously you can't do with a screenplay and um just things like choosing the cover and uh you know all the personal touches that go into it um yeah and there's a cat on the cover of course what is the significance of that (laughs) the cat is very significant um the cat's very special magical kind of uh character because the cat was owned by Wendy my protagonist's grandmother Uh and Wendy has lost her grandmother and their grandmother was the one person in the world who understood her and she's she's passed away it's a very difficult time for Wendy and so she's left her her cat but Wendy can't stand cats she hates cats and so she doesn't want to see this cat and be reminded of losing her grandmother and she doesn't want to see the cat be reminded of her childhood because her parents are obsessive cat fanciers but what she doesn't realize is this cat has some very special um, abilities and it can actually lead her to a much more positive place in her life um so it's a it's an interesting character that, that ends up bringing people together yeah absolutely so when you first got the idea to write the book where did it all come from all this inspiration um well uh, a lot of different places really um 
one of my one earlier memory I have that relates directly to my character Wendy is I should start off by saying Wendy is losing her hearing mm. and at, at quite a young age and um, having re- done some research on this I realized that you know there's over a billion people worldwide that have are suffering with hearing loss yeah. and there are one in two babies in every 1,000 in the UK are, are born with permanent hearing loss so it's something that you don't often see um you know covered in 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 young adult right. fiction yeah um and so my character Wendy I wanted her to um be someone that people could relate to who she was she's an ordinary woman but she's also extraordinary in what she's going through in her life and so when I was about seven I remember I was in a travel agent with my mother Mm. and there was a man who suddenly said to one of the women that was working there can you please stop covering your mouth Mm. and it turned out that he was lip reading and I I thought that this was so incredible as a seven-year-old that someone would have this skill mm. and that he was just so proficient and just very um you know capable at reading lips and I was it was something like I just I never knew about really as a young child and I always thought that this is quite incredible that that someone would have this skill and I never forgot it and um I felt like I wanted to incorporate that into my book and I spoke to different people that were going through their own journeys with hearing loss and people that were hard of hearing some people that would lose their lose their hearing completely yeah. and so this really inspired me to write my character Wendy and I knew that I wanted to write something that was um, accessible to everybody yeah um, and so but another part of my inspiration was just seeing seeing films where um, for women to kind of be extraordinary or strong they have to like know kung fu or they have to have like a machine gun or something and I thought well that's not really necessary I mean Mm. most people just ordinary people are quite extraordinary in all the things that they go through and all the challenges that they face and we all keep it under wraps yeah but actually people are quietly extraordinary yeah that's for sure and I guess a book is something that a deaf person can still read there's no barrier there right exactly yeah um and so this is what it's kind of about it's about you know barriers it's about um um, people be understanding each other, giving each other time, communicating. Mm. Um, the cat in the book is also from the fact that I grew up with cats. We rescued a lot of cats in my family from um, different places in the world, going on holiday and finding them, and also um, just locally. And I kind of wanted to bring together a lot of things I I love and the, the different things that move me and the different things that I felt needed to be shown and given a voice in writing. Yeah, absolutely. And as you kind of alluded to, people who are hard of hearing are kind of forgotten about in a way. There's so many things that I guess we don't really think about that they would struggle with. Like, I don't know, a YouTube video. I guess it's kind of a lot of work, to be fair, if you're just a small YouTuber. But, you know, a lot of them don't have subtitles and then they can't watch them, Mm -hmm. I guess. No, that's right. Um, And it can also be, you know, uh, quite exhausting for people with um, hearing loss just daily kind of tasks you know going to meet up with friends and trying to hear people with a loud background can be quite exhausting or yeah. you know agitating um and like you say videos without subtitles or television without um sign language and yeah. and also there's a lot of different um some people you know cannot hear at all and some people have partial hearing loss and you know some people have tinnitus there's all kinds of uh situations that people are living through yeah so it's i think it's important that that, you know it's something that people are kind of more aware of yeah and like you say especially creatively when it comes to videos and movies that there's accessibility for people yeah absolutely so the name of the book sounds like love is that a Mm -hmm. name that's came from the idea of being hard of hearing or is it completely unrelated 
The title is, yes, it's to do with the purr of a cat yeah. and how that purr conveys love and, and the vibration of the purr resonates mm. um, with anybody. Yeah, absolutely. And so there are certain, you know, scenes in the book that um, that kind of convey this. Yeah. So after this book, have you got any more books planned, any sequels or unrelated future projects? I have. I've already finished another novel um, um, it's more of a steampunk novel. It, it has another uh, feline theme. Ah. Um, it's in um, 1864 in London, wow. and um, it's a it's a magical fantasy. Um, but I can't reveal any more. <laughs> but yes, it's complete, and I can't wait to to show people that book when the time comes. Yeah, I guess you like your cats then. <laughs> Definitely, I like my cats. I lo- I just love animals generally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I happen to have two cats that I've. <laughs> <laughs> I really adore so that definitely helps the process yeah definitely and I guess if somebody sees a book that's got an animal on it they're a million times more likely to pick it up and see what it's about probably if you did a study on it I hope so yeah I'm yeah. going to agree with you there definitely <laughs> <laughs> so when you're not making books and all this stuff what kind of fun mm-hmm. things do you like to spend your time doing my goodness I love to travel I yeah. mean obviously before um, we had restrictions I would be traveling all the time yeah. um, and since that time you know I've been writing also I've been out walking a lot and um, I've been writing poetry and doing photography making jewelry Ooh. and I used to um, so obviously I'm from I'm from the UK but I, I live in America yeah. and uh, one of the things I used to really enjoy actually when I visited was I have a motorbike that I um, oh. have in the UK and I would go out for country rides so I can't wait to get back and see family and um, do that again. Well, yeah, definitely. And being from the UK, but living in America, which spellings do you use in your books? No, I use British spellings in my <laughs> book. I was kind of true to myself. I was like, I can't remove use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the correct way then. The correct way, exactly. That's what I say. I get a little bit, I get a little bit pretentious, and I'm like, ah, it's the correct way. It's, uh, <laughs> it's English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's called English, not American. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Keep those views. Yeah. No Z or Z's. Oh yeah, exactly. Well, where are we able to find the book if we'd like to read it? Um, it's available on Amazon and uh, Kindle. Yeah. It's also available on Google Books yeah. and uh, the iTunes Bookstore. Yeah. And you can order it from any bookstore as well. It's available worldwide, so that's cool. Yeah, that's a lot of places. Then there's no excuse not to find it. There's no excuse. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. It's been great having you on. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. It's been lovely talking to you. <laughs>